All week long, the I team's been taking a closer look at the issue of how much of Nevada is controlled by the federal government. And tonight, the I team examines the fight to get that land under state control. Now, one state task force estimates it would mean millions of extra dollars for Nevada. Joe Bartels is here to explain the debate that has really been heating up in our state lately. Yeah, Joe? guys, there is a lot of passion on both sides of this issue. The legislature has tried to address the issue since the 60s, mostly in the form of toothless resolutions urging the feds to give Nevada some land. With a Republican-controlled state Senate and Assembly, along with a Republican governor, the federal control of land within Nevada's borders is likely going to be tackled once again during the legislative session in February. Work on the 215 Northern Beltway is coming at a substantial cost, but the highway is seen as a vital link for the growing north part of the valley. Some of the cost will go to Washington, D.C. That's because the land the highway is on is controlled by the federal government. Well, it's a cluster. It impedes development and it impedes the practical common land use. Clark County Commissioner Tom Collins says the county paid almost a million dollars to the Bureau of Land Management to expand the highway and the county will continue to pay the feds to lease the land as long as Uncle Sam owns it. We have over 30,000 acres of land. The schoolhouses are on, the libraries are on, streets and highways and detention basins and y you name it. Um, a lot of federal land checkerboarded all over inside this valley. Collins says renewal of lease paperwork and federal red tape cost Clark County taxpayers every year. Collins has been a supporter of bringing federally controlled land into state hands. He was part of a 17 member task force charged with examining the issue statewide. The task force report concluded that Nevada could make more than $200 million per year if some 7 million acres of federal land throughout Nevada would change hands. Do you think the federal government will just hand over 7 million plus no. acres? No. Not all at once. Definitely not all at once. Collins says he envisions the land would largely be used the same way if it came under state control. He says the land could generate cash in the form of rents, fees, and could even be sold for development. However, the debate over these vast Nevada lands has come up before. So has the money argument. There are two basic reasons that I see that the task force report didn't really answer. One is the money. We don't have money to take over the private, the, the federal lands, call them federal lands. Former State Assembly Speaker Paul Aisley says Nevada cannot afford to pay for things like fire suppression should a wildfire break out. Aisley says a federal government spent millions battling wildfires in 2013, among other expenses. The second thing that seems to be pretty clear is that there are hundreds of employees in Nevada working BLM, Forest Service, and so on. Where are we going to put them? Which county will take them on and put them on the payroll? Collins says the task force report is just a suggestion to the feds and nothing more. Nevada GOP leadership has said publicly the debate over federally controlled land in Nevada will likely be a key issue in the upcoming legislative session. Proponents say locals could do a better job managing the land without input from Washington, D.C. politicians. And the study which claims Nevada could make more than $200 million per year was conducted by the former economic development director for Lincoln County. Critics question how fair this study is. Aisley told us he has serious concerns how the land task force was created in the first place. He says the task force committee was too small and comprised of people with similar land views throughout Nevada. The I-team is digging into different aspects of managing public lands from grazing and mining to energy development and endangered species to determine whether more should be given back to Nevada in a one-hour special. Rebellion on the Range airs Sunday at 6 p.m. And Joe, as you know, this debate's been going on for decades. You can learn a lot more by heading to 8newsnow.com. We have an elaborate infographic, a whole history of public lands in our state. All you have to do is look for the banner Rebellion on the Range. 